Hey, let's talk about what will necessitatively so be in the Fujifilm X-T3. Now, it's already been reported on the rumor site that the Fujifilm X-T3 will have less than a 30, me a 30 megapixel sensor. What it will in fact be is a 28 megapixel BSI, backside illuminated sensor. What this does give you by changing the uh, structure of the sensor as is found in the Nikon D850 and in uh, the Samsung NX500 uh, is a uh, higher ISO performance, better native gain on the sensor. What this will also let you do as is found on uh, the Nikon D500 and other Nikon cameras is have electronic VR. This in no way A compromises the uh, nature of the thickness of the Fujifilm X-T3 since necessitatively the IBIS mechanism requires at least eight millimeters more of thickness which is quite substantial in the already thin Fujifilm cameras. So what this will let you do is actually use the sensor in a crop mode. I don't know if you know how actually electronic stabilization works. Since on the Nikon D500, for example, it's already a crop sensor camera. In video mode capability, what this does is it actually gives you a reduced field of view and actually crops out the edge of the sensor for video use. However, this can be implemented for photography as well. What it does is it actually samples the actual image on the sensor. So without actually moving the sensor mechanically, which has a number of pitfalls of which I've uh, illuminated extensively, it samples the image on the sensor. So the 28 megapixel backside illuminated sensor that would be necessitatively within the Fujifilm X-T3 would be able to give you a cropped image stabilization for video use and very likely also for photography, but certainly so for video use, a 24 megapixel output. So the 28 megapixels would be cropped on the edges exactly as it is done on the Nikon D500 for video use. This is called electronic VR or electronic stabilization. Instead of actually moving the sensor, what you do is you crop in the sensor and then you move the sampling of the image or the video that falls on the sensor. So what this will give the Fujifilm X-T3, logically and necessitatively so, is A, much improved high ISO performance, B, better low light dynamic range since it's a backside illuminated sensor, more megapixels, but not actually compromising dynamic range since it'll have better native gain at the sensor since it is a BSI sensor. If you don't know what the advantages of a BSI sensor are, just simply Google it and you'll actually see the nature of the design change where the wiring infrastructure is placed to the back instead of the front. So this would keep the Fujifilm X-T3 theoretically as thin as the X-T2 since there is nothing that needs to be added to the actual chassis and mount of the sensor. So we'll have a 28 megapixel that would be able to be cropped down to 24 megapixels, for example, for video use to be certain, same as is found on the Nikon D500 and others with electronic VR, or what you can call electronic stabilization. So that's it. Most people don't know what electronic VR is. I mean, there's uh, several ways to actually stabilize an image. Most beneficial, of course, is lens stabilization since it is much, much closer to the center axis of the actual line of the photo being taken, whereas the sensor, of course, is on the far end. Um, but the other option is actually sampling the sensor, as the Nikon D500 does. So this actually overcomes uh, the pitfalls of image degradation, which Fujifilm president himself spelled out in an article interview that he gave several years ago about why there's not IBIS in their cameras. Um, there obviously would be one if Fujifilm came out with a video camera, wink, wink, nod, nod, <laughs> as if I don't know anything. Um, so that's the answer of uh, doing that. Same technology as in the Nikon D500 for electronic VR. Greatly improved high ISO performance, more megapixels, four more megapixels. Um, the only thing the BSI gives you is the capability of adding some more megapixels without compromising really, really important dynamic range. Since you have better native gain, you're able to cram in a few more megapixels 
on the sensor. So that would make the X-T3 extremely pleasing and a welcome advantage to all people looking to upgrade to the X-T3. It will have electronic stabilization, backside illuminated sensor, better high ISO performance. The camera would remain as thin as the X-T2 since there's no additional need for any sort of mechanical infrastructure to support a larger chassis and uh, electromagnetically floating sensor. And uh, that's the answer to that one. Have a nice weekend. Bye.